Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our founder, Grace Allums, and our director, Gloria Garcia, all of our teaching staff and our students, we would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone, including the Department of Education and Early Learning, the Seattle Preschool Program, and of course, our special guest this morning, Mary Jenny Durkham. My name is Amanda Benjamin. I am assistant director and the family support worker for Creative Kids Learning Center. For over 23 years, Ms. Allums has consistently focused on providing high quality early learning program that is equitable, affordable, and accessible to every family in our community. Her efforts and dedication over the years have even won her a congressional award. Our partnership with SPP for the past few years has been amazing to say the least. When SPP started their mission, it aligned beautifully with our vision and we are so glad to be a part of their program. We have since seen growth and success in the way we are able to provide accessible, high quality care that is individualized for each child, no matter where they come from. The Seattle Preschool Program provides us with additional resources, such as trainings that include culturally relevant teaching practices for our children and their families. We also get coaching for each site to promote high quality teaching year after year. And they hold us accountable um, by doing assessments through the University of Washington. We are also provided access to public health nurses who partner with us to ensure that each child is emotionally, socially, and physically ready for kindergarten. We are so very grateful to the city for making this beautiful space here at Car Creek available to us and other park buildings around the city for SVP families. Once again, we would like to thank Deal, SVP, and everyone for being here. A special thanks to our hardworking teachers and support staff and to everyone who has made our success possible. And of course, Mayor Durkin for your support. It is with pleasure that I introduce you to Mayor Jenny Durkin. It is such an honor to have you visit our Kirky classroom today. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who works here, the teachers, the kids, thanks to the parents for letting us come in. Um, this is such a great morning for us. You're gonna hear from Tim Burgess, our former mayor, and Dr. Gail Johnson. But just look around the space, and you saw the faces of the children. We know that good pre-K pre works. And Seattle set about to set up one of the best preschool programs there was. And after some rigorous analysis, we found that we're succeeding. Um, and I, I kid people sometimes that, you know, we in government feel the need to study what moms just know. Uh, which is that good pre-K helps kids throughout their lives. Um, and we are now seeing that this independent analysis has a lot of good news for Seattle. It shows that Seattle Preschool Program is now one of our nation's best. I want to say that again. The Seattle Preschool Program is one of our nation's best. Our investment in pre-K is helping families be healthier throughout Seattle, and it's an investment in our workforce development. Most importantly, it's an investment in the opportunity for our kids and for their families. Our youngest learners are making significant gains across vocabulary, literacy, and math. We know those are the fundamental building blocks of education later. And our preschool programs, the quality that we have, the rigorous training that we have for our, for our teachers and the programs is working. As the evaluation says, the Seattle Preschool Program's quality now exceeds in some major city and state pre-K programs. It's on par with the widely recognized New York City and San Antonio programs. It's really good news for the Seattle Preschool Program and for Seattle because quality preschool is one of those things that we can give to children that we know helps them succeed in life. If kids show up ready to learn, they can learn better. And that's why we are so proud that this preschool program works. We know that this evaluation also makes it clear that children who participated in the Seattle preschool programs are the ones that, will, that most needed an investment in their future. 77%, 77% of children in the study were under 300% of the federal poverty line, 77%. That's currently at $75,000 and, and a little bit over that annually for a family of four. So most of our kids are coming from those families that need it the most. And without this program, 
Let's be clear, they wouldn't get it. And without this program, those kids would fall further behind and opportunity would be foreclosed for them. We're making great strides in preschool and it's really great to be here today. One thing you weren't able to see, what I've seen in other preschools, is not just the expression on the kids' faces and the joy of learning with other kids, but the joy on their parents' faces when they bring them to a place that is not only safe, but they know is going to provide them that fundamental learning they need to succeed in life, to succeed later in school. So this is good news for the city of Seattle. It shows that when we invest in our kids, it works. And now I think that I'm turning it over to Dr. Gail Joseph, who can tell you more about the specifics of the study. Thank good you so you, much. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, good morning. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for hosting us in this lovely space. My name is Gail Joseph and I'm on faculty in the College of Education at the University of Washington and a part of the Seattle Preschool Program Evaluation Team. The National Institute for Early Education Research, or NEAR for short, at Rutgers University and Cultivate Learning at the University of Washington conducted a third year of evaluation of the Seattle Preschool Program. So I'm reporting on some results that come from last year's 17-18 year. Um, I'm going to provide just some high-level brief remarks. Um, first of all, all child and program assessments were conducted by trained and reliable observers from the University of Washington, and all of the analyses were conducted by Dr. Steve Barnett and Milagros Norris at NEAR in uh, New Jersey. Um, in this year of the evaluation, we really sought to answer three overarching questions. Who is being served in Seattle Preschool Program and how does that compare with the general Seattle um, public school population? What is the quality of the Seattle Preschool Program classrooms and did it improve from last year? And what are the early, um, what are the early academic and executive functioning skills of children as they enter Seattle Preschool Program and when they leave? So in other words, do they make gains? There were 48 Seattle Preschool Program classrooms and 13 family child care homes, which were added last year as a pilot, included in the evaluation. And this is an increase from 32 programs in the last year. 761 children were randomly selected from these classrooms and family child care homes to have their skills directly assessed. 615 of those children were assessed both in the fall and again in the spring, so pre and post, on these direct assessments. So who was served in the Seattle Preschool Program? You heard a little bit of that from Mayor Durkin. I'll tell you that 74% of the children that entered Seattle Preschool Program last year were four years old. That means 26% were three. Um, and they really were quite similar to the general public school population in Seattle with respect to gender, language, and income. Seattle Preschool Program children, though, are somewhat more likely to be identified as African American or black or Asian, um, and less likely to identify as white. And I can give more specifics about that that if you would like. Um, and so what is the quality of the Seattle preschool um, program classrooms? Well, we measured Seattle preschool program classroom quality using two well-known direct observational measures that were conducted by trained assessors with unannounced visits in February, March, and April of 2018. And with respect to program quality, we continue to see quality improvements over these three years. And in this last year's study, the new and existing classrooms exceeded the previous year's average levels of quality on all measures, which is great news. Um, so that means program quality in just the third year of existence of the Seattle Preschool Program is now reaching levels that have been associated with strong positive gains for children in other large-scale studies. And as Mayor Durkin points out, we are now on par with well-known programs such as New York City, San Antonio. And I will tell you that these levels of quality exceed reported quality of Head Start programs. I also want to say silhouetted against last year, I would stress that the area of instructional support has improved significantly. And I want to give you a little sense of what that means. This means that our observers are noting that teachers are engaging in interactions with children that are really fostering their deep level thinking skills. Teachers are using novel and advanced vocabulary words and they're noticing when children need a little extra help and they're providing enough scaffolding and encouragement for the child to arrive at the answer on their own among many other things that we see. And I want to stress that this level of high quality is seen in both our center-based um, classrooms and in the family child care homes. And that mixed delivery system of center classrooms and family child care homes is something that other cities are looking to do, so we are leading the way in that. 
Um, a few areas emerged as targets for continuous quality improvements, specifically in the area of personal care routines, um, which decreased in quality from last year, and that's something that Seattle Preschool Program coaches can be helping to support programs um, pay more attention to. Um, and then how did children do? Well, we measure children's skills in the fall and the spring of the year with direct child assessment in the areas of receptive vocabulary, so understanding words, their early literacy, their early math, and executive functioning skills. And children in the Seattle Preschool Program made gains in every domain measured. And those gains in literacy, language, and math are larger than you would expect from just maturation or, or age alone, which is good news. So all in all, there is very encouraging news to report on the Seattle Preschool Program. And we recommend that Seattle Preschool Program continue to build on this quality and engage in continuous quality improvement using a very robust uh, set of data that they can draw upon. And we're just entering the fourth year of the evaluation, so stay tuned. Thank you. And I hand it over. Thank you very much. This is a great day for Seattle. The results of this uh, independent and objective evaluation make it very clear that we are ready to close the opportunity gap that has held back so many of our kids from lower income families and communities of color. The Seattle Preschool Program now matches or exceeds the quality that we see in other major cities and states around the country. The Seattle Preschool Program beats National Head Start. We beat Washington's Early Achievers Program, and we match what we see in San Antonio, New York City, Boston, and New Jersey. And the credit for this remarkable performance on behalf of our children goes to our community providers, like where we're at today, the Seattle School District, our classroom teachers, and the amazing mentor coaches who are in the classroom every day helping our teachers improve even more. Back at the beginning, we set incredibly high standards. We insisted on diversity in the classroom and among our teachers, and we said from the very beginning that we would never waver on the quality of our program, and we haven't. Our children deserve the best. The voters of Seattle can rest assured that their investment is working and making a difference. And I urge Seattle voters to join me and Mayor Durkin and approve Proposition 1, which is on the November ballot. This will continue the expansion of pre-K. It will continue to provide academic support to our K-12 students. And it will launch and open the door to college for so many of our high school graduates. Thank you. Take a few questions for, for either Mayor Burgess or Dr. Joseph. Joseph, thank you. I was gonna say your first name, I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit more about how the math results were? I think there was some Struggling. Sure. There, Come by them. Yeah, absolutely. So math results. Yes, there were gains in math, but the gains were not as significant as they were last year. So what you saw reported was just that they weren't as large as this so they as last better, year. So but not as, as much better as they did. Yes, before. correct. Great. <laughs> and I just want to emphasize that again is, you know, we set really high bar, and a lot of people said it was too high, but our teachers, our communities, our Seattle deal, Seattle public schools responded, but mostly the kids responded. If you give them an environment where they can learn, they will learn. That's what this shows. And if we teach them young, it gets them so they show up in kindergarten ready to learn. And that is the number one way we can close the opportunity gap. And if we then make sure that through K through five, we're really looking at the family supports that we need to have, and then nine through 12, pointing kids to college and then giving them free college, we know that we will close the opportunity gap in Seattle probably more quickly than we can do in anything else. We're going to an era where in the next five years, we expect that there will be over 700,000 jobs, good family wage jobs created in the Puget Sound area. 700,000 jobs. Most of those jobs are gonna require some post high school education training certificate or degree. 
Only 30% of our kids are getting that. We have to make sure that the continuum of education gets our kids ready to learn and provides them that opportunity. And schools like this school, I mean, just look around. It is fantastic. It shows a great partnership with the great teachers here, the founders, the families, the kids, the park setting. It's working. Our kids are learning. They are achieving. They've shown that when we give them the supports, they will excel. So it's really good news for Seattle, and if we continue this preschool program, we will be doing more to advance equity and opportunity than in other areas. I could ask Dr. Joseph a couple of questions. Sure. Sure. Hi there. Um, could it be that because Seattle spends more than Boston, that that might have some impact on the quality of the pre-K? That the um, funding has yeah. an impact? Um, I think we would have to unpack that more to understand. We haven't done a cost-benefit analysis, but to un but are there mentor coaches that are really helping support and improve the program? Yes. Okay. And, and it, the Seattle Times said it uh, reviewed the evaluation cost four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Is that about right? Is that an ongoing annual cost? I think that's about right. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, sure, sorry. <laughs> Can you talk a little about the cost and what we're talking about with the family education side? What Prop 1 is, what you're talking Yeah, about. Proposition 1 is a continuum of education. What we saw is since 1990, um, and Mayor Norm Rice first adventure to say, we in Seattle need to do more to support our schools. And we had a family and education levy that voters have supported for years. We then passed the preschool levy to say, we know that K through 12 isn't enough. We've got to get kids ready to go. Those, both of those levies are expiring. If those levies go away, those supports will go away. But we've combined those levies, and we've also added to make sure that those kids who successfully graduate from Seattle Public Schools will get two years free college at the Seattle Colleges. We'll get them ready in high school, we'll have counselors navigating the way, and then when they land, they'll have counselors there. It is shown that that kind of program also advances opportunity. So what the voters have the opportunity to do in Proposition 1 is to say, we believe in our kids. We believe in opportunity. And we know if we really want to advance equity, particularly racial equity in Seattle, we have to give kids a fair shot. And to give them a fair shot, that means we've got to get them ready to go to school with good, strong pre-K. We've got to try to close that opportunity gap in K through 12. And then we have to give them that fundamental underpinning so that they are ready to have those jobs of opportunity. Down the road, if we combine that with really good jobs and apprenticeship programs, this region will be unstoppable. What do you say to those voters? Tax Here's what we say is, with these two levies expiring, the total cost for the average house is $20 more a year. You could not spend $20 more a year better to help Seattle. We look at the range of things and opportunities and challenges we have in Seattle. Um, you look, for example, in our homelessness programs, or we know that foster care, the criminal justice system, those things are feeding it disproportionately people of color and disproportionately people who did not have educational opportunities that I had and was able to succeed. So if we are able to pivot and continue to support these great programs that we know work, give our kids that start, we will see that Seattle becomes a better city. I think it is one of the most important things any of us can do for opportunity for Seattle and its children. Thank you.